receptors. This is the bucket seat. So what do you think is going on with their backs right there, right? So they're rolled back on their pelvis. Everybody know where their pelvis is, these two little bones here, that little pelvis thing? We're going to explore that a little bit. That's the most important thing when you're sitting to know where your pelvis is. So the pain points are the low back tension, right? Feeling compressed, right? Because when you're leaning you're in, and you're uh, leaning on it, tight hamstrings, a psoas muscle, and a gluteus muscle. Okay, so tight hamstrings, we all know what that is, right? Back of the legs. Psoas muscle, you guys know what that is? It's this hip flexor, that muscle. When you go like this, put your hand right here, you guys, and lift your knee up. You feel that? You feel that muscle firing? That's your psoas muscle. It's a big hip flexor. It gets you to walk up the steps, right? But when you sit a lot, it is stagnant and it's tight like this. It's almost like a 90 degree angle. This muscle's very big. It's as wide as your wrist. It's huge. And when it gets tight, guess what it does? It pulls on your low back, right? So if the front side is tight, the low back is gonna be compensating for that. And then the glutes, we all know what that is, right? We all think the glutes, this guy, right? But there's two other glutes that are really important. There's two little glute muscles, medius and minimus, right here. All of the glutes are really important for stabilizing your back and your hips. So let's look at what's happening in your anatomy. Look at this. When, he, when that pelvis or the butt is tucked under in the bucket seat, you see automatically the spine has to compensate and round yourself forward. It's just physics, right? So you can see now how much compression there is on that low back. Now, this is a really interesting point for anybody who has tight hamstrings. Your hamstrings connect to this place right here. This is the sit bone, okay? And it connects all the way to the back of your knee. Can you see how this is gonna be shorter if you sit in that little tuck position? You're gonna be, have shorter, tighter hamstrings. So you're not gonna be able to bend down because those hamstrings aren't gonna be able to uh, stretch enough. And then the upper back, of course, is gonna get kyphotic. So in seniors, Okay, I teach to seniors a lot. This is a very common pose for them, right? Kyphotic means a hunchback, basically. And what happens, you guys, and this is why it's so important for you to really see the skeleton, is your muscles keep your bones in place. Okay, so you got to stretch your muscles. you got to loosen them. you got to get them in the right, you know, configuration, and then your bones will follow. Okay, there's no chiropractors that this is going to help a senior that's all hunched over. That senior's got to work a lot on stretching the muscles, doing these movements, and then their muscles will pull the bones back in place. So a chiropractor's not going to fix something like this. And that's what I found out when I was going to the chiropractor all that time. He couldn't fix my, the bones of my neck, which were always getting whacked up because my muscles were just so tight. Right? Okay, so the psoas muscle we talked about, right? Look at how big it is right here. Okay, so it attaches down here. So if we wanted to stretch the psoas muscle, I want to see how, how logical you guys are. I know you're all logical because you're in high tech, right? How logical? How would we stretch this muscle right here? Anybody? This maybe? Look at. Yeah, this leg going back, right? And then add to that an arm going up, right? Because now you're stretching both connections of that muscle. Anytime you do this, it's going to stretch that psoas muscle, which is going to be really important. This one I love. I love um, when muscles and, and bones make sense. The erector spinaeus. They are muscles that start from the back of your neck, go all the way down to your tailbone. And anybody remember the erector sets when you were younger? Right? They keep your spine erect. But when you're rounded over, those muscles are weak. They're just rounding. They're just kind of hanging there, right? So that's why you're going to get a lot of tension in the upper back, the lower back, because all those muscles are basically stretched and they're not very strong. So it's all about finding the balance, okay? Pelvic tilts, we'll explore that. Hip and spine extensions, right? That thing I just showed you, right? Gentle back bends. Anytime you go oh, back bends, right? That opens up the front of your body. And then, of course, we'll do hamstring stretches, and that's why you have the belt. Hamstrings affect the quality of your low back, right? So if we're sitting like this and the hamstrings are tucked, they're very, very short, and they're not going to let you lean and pick up things and go down on the floor. So we're going to stretch those guys. So everybody find their ischial tuberosities. You know what those are? Your sit bones, okay? You got them. You're sitting on them, right? You're going to take the belt across the ball of the right foot, and I'm mirroring you. And the ball of the foot, you guys, is that fleshy toe mound, not the arch, okay, the fleshy toe mound. And then one hand on each side, and we're going to stretch it out. 
Oh, and you know what? It doesn't matter if your foot is super high up to the ceiling or super low. It doesn't matter. The most important thing is your leg is as straight as a pencil. And now we're going to stretch a little bit into the hamstring. We're going to bend the knee, which shortens the hamstring, and then we're going to straighten it out. Yeah. So sometimes, you know, there's a, a concept called a stretch reflex, which means if you just hold a muscle and try to stretch it, stretch, stretch, stretch it, and breathe and breathe, the muscle sometimes does the opposite. It tightens. So when you do this, the hamstring knows it's going to be safe, right? Oh, I'm contracting a little bit. That means I'm getting shorter. Oh, there, I'm getting longer, right? So that's going to help the hamstrings much more than just holding it. Good. Now when the leg is straight, grab the belt with the right hand. The left hand is going to be out with the thumb up, and we're just going to open up. And I know you've got the leg chair, uh, the armchair, so be careful. And then gaze over to the thumb and maybe even pull the arm back. Remember, that's going to open up the chest a little bit more. And then back to the center. And then we're going to crisscross. So grab a hold of the belt, and we're just going to crisscross the other way. And then back to the center. Good. And then release that. We'll go to the other side. So now, and you'll notice sometimes one hamstring's a little tighter than the other, right? So you want to flex the foot. So flexing the foot, we're going to stretch the arch of your foot, the Achilles, the calf, the hamstring, all of those to get a nice stretch. Straight as a pencil. Bottom foot is grounded, okay? It's not cattywampus. Good. And then we're going to bend and straighten. Bend and straighten. This is your beautiful joint alignment because your hip, your knee, your ankle, and your toes are all in the same plane, ideally. And if they are, then arthritis won't set into those joints. Arthritis sets in when the joints are misaligned. Good. Straighten it up. Everybody sitting up tall. I see some of this going on right now. Okay. Sit up tall. Good. Grab the belt. Left arm. Right arm is going to be out with the thumb up, and we're going to open up as wide as you can. Those are the inner thigh muscles we're stretching. And then gaze to that thumb. Stretch your arm back a little bit. And then back to the center. We'll flip the grip. So we're going to grab it with the right hand. The left arm is out. And just twist the other way. So twisting and stretching. Good. Come back. And then release. Let go of your belt. Shake it out a little bit. Yeah.